Blood for Beauty, it's the treatment gaining popularity all across the country and right here in Metro Detroit. The so-called vampire facial involves drawing your own blood and re-injecting it into your face. And it's all the fad among celebrities, some of the biggest names in entertainment even having it done. But now that treatment is under the microscope. Just this week, two people were reportedly infected with HIV after getting the procedure done at a spa in New Mexico. Tonight, 7 Action News reporter Amira David is showing how the treatment is supposed to work and what you need to know before you have it done. Earlier this week, health officials tied two HIV cases to injection-related procedures out of an unlicensed New Mexico spa. Procedures thought to be related to the Hollywood facial gaining popularity across the country. Maybe you've seen it on social media. The treatment, often referred to as the vampire or blood facial, put on the map by celebrities like Kim Kardashian. I know during it looks a little scary, but that all just gets wiped away. Christy Jones isn't afraid in the least. She's at an above board medical practice called Zuliani Facial Aesthetics, getting that blood facial, also known as microneedling with PRP. PRP supporters say when done regularly, it does wonders for acne scarring, fine lines and wrinkles. But how does this alleged magic work? You are using a machine to create these micro channels in the skin. And that in and of itself is causing a good increase in collagen and elastin. But you're using the PRP to augment that. PRP, or platelet-rich plasma, comes from your own blood. Spun in a centrifuge and separated until you get the best concentration of platelets. After the numbing cream goes on, a pen uses fine needles to create hundreds of tiny invisible puncture wounds. And that surface injury is what stimulates skin cells to regenerate. You're stimulating collagen and elastin. We're tricking your skin into creating more. On a scale of 1 to 10, Christy says the pain is at about a 2 or 3, but says the results are worth the discomfort and the roughly 600 bucks per treatment. When you put your makeup on, everything's so much smoother. I love that I'm using my own blood, my own plasma. Those looking for a natural approach to skin care like it as an alternative to injectables or fillers like Botox. It actually is very safe. It's nothing foreign. It's, it's you. And Dr. Zuliani says its use is now expanding with a new trend using PRP injections to stimulate hair growth. But as the procedure popularizes, so do concerns about safety practices, which is why Dr. Sean Jayakar says you've got to be choosy about who you allow to do the job. It should be safer because you're using your own blood, but if you're going to a facility that's not using universal precautions, you could run into serious problems. Experts say you need to make sure the establishment is licensed. For PRP facials, only use an esthetician working under the care of a staffed medical doctor. For PRP hair growth, the procedure should only be performed by a doctor. And beware of coupons with ultra-low prices that promise a certain outcome. And it can't be overestimated how important it is to do your research beforehand. If a deal sounds like it's too good to be true, it most definitely is. I'm Amira David, 7 Action News. Yeah, most important thing there, make sure you do your research before you do something like that. Always, always. Mm -hmm. All right, here's what we're working on for so Monday at 6. A Detroit woman devoted to rebuilding back. the neighborhood she lives in, taking a vow to add value to yeah, it yeah, brick I by brick. Giving the people healthy, affordable eating options. She believes if she builds it, they will come. And she's refusing to let high construction costs get in her way. I own this building outright. I paid for it. I redeveloped it. I managed my own construction. I hired every single crew that did all this work. I did it all. It just says that I can do it and I want to show others that they can do it as well. Monday at 6, the history behind this construction, when it's expected to be open for business, and what else is next for this East Jefferson block?